James W. Moody here. Peace and greetings, everyone. I'd like to share a story with you today from another day when I was jogging. So, I'm jogging, just as I am now, and in my own neighborhood. And I come up on a, a driveway. I'm gonna switch the camera and show you. I come up on a driveway just like this. See how this, the sidewalk runs right through the driveway. That's the typical driveway in my neighborhood. I'll show you again, here's some more. Like the driveway's like right there, but you have to drive past the sidewalk to get to it, over the sidewalk. So as I said, I'm jogging, and I come up on a house, and the car is literally parked right here. There was our driveway and the street. But the car was literally blocking the sidewalk. There was no other car in the driveway. Um, it wasn't like they were delivering packages or anything. They just put the car right there. So I'm coming up to this area. Now I have to get in the street. It was a lot of traffic. And I'm running and there are other people out with their dogs. Elderly people and handicapped people use those same sidewalks. So in the middle of the block, if you have the sidewalk uh, blocked, some of the elderly people that actually have to try and step off the sidewalk into the street could be injured. And some of the handicapped people that are using the sidewalk, they can't get by. There's no way to roll around. As fate would have it, there was a young woman of color coming out of the house. So I smiled. I said, Hey, your car is blocking the driveway. I mean, your, your car is blocking the, uh, the sidewalk, and it's, you know, dangerous for some people trying to get into the street to get around it. So, female, she said, this is my neighborhood, and I don't remember seeing you around here. I said, well, that's not the point. I said, but this is my neighborhood. She says, no, I know my neighbors, and I've never seen you around here. I said, well, what does that have to do with anything? The access, this is public access. She says, don't worry about my sidewalk. I said, ma'am, that is not your sidewalk. I said, you may be responsible for it. I said, but that's public right away. We have a right to use that. You can't just clog it up for your own, uh, your own needs. Well, we just kept going back and forth. So I, like I said, I was running and I didn't want to, cool down. I said, ma'am, I said, well, you have it your way. I said, if you want to be inconsiderate, you go right ahead. I don't have anything else to say. But the first thing I forgot to tell you, when I saw her coming out of the house, she said, that's not my car. When she said it wasn't her car, I said, oh, excuse me. And the conversation would have been over. But the second she said that, she started yapping about, it's not my neighborhood, it's her neighborhood, it's her property. So I says, look, uh, my lighting is horrible. All right, so I said, look, I was just trying to mention it to you. You're not receiving it. I'm gonna keep moving. As I was jogging away, she was like following me, like trying to get the last word in. And I just kept saying, ma'am, have it your way. You want to be inconsiderate? Just be inconsiderate. And I jogged away. Here's the weird part. 
I'm a couple blocks away from my home. Do you know that she followed me home? Yes, she followed me home. And waited until I got into my own driveway. Once I got there, there was a piece of trash. There was a piece of trash, and I picked up the piece of trash. When I looked up, she was right beside me with the car. Unbeknownst to me, and what a surprise that was, right? So, she screamed out the car. Ooh, this light is true. She screamed out of the car window. This is what you worry about. You worry about your own property. I said, ma'am, I said, this is our neighborhood. I just said it was inconsiderate for you to have your car blocked, for that car to be blocked. That's my mother's car. That's my mother's neighborhood. And you're not my neighbor. I already told you you weren't my neighbor. You live away from here. I guess she, I don't know what her point was. But she totally missed the point that I was saying about being considerate. So I was, I got angry myself. And I said, I said, ma'am, you're confused. You're confused. She had this horrible looking weave in her head. And I said, ma'am, I said, you're confused. There's no wonder that I can't. Okay. It's no wonder that you don't understand what I'm trying to tell you because you're in a confused state. I said, just look at your appearance. I said, look at that weave. I said, you don't even understand why you're wearing that weave the way you do. And, oh, why did I say that? She started saying everything she could say and I said I said ma'am I said I don't blame you I said you're confused and uh, I just kept telling her she was confused and I said if you weren't you wouldn't be wearing that that mop on your head I said you would be wearing your own natural head I said but you don't even understand why you do the things that you do which brings me to this point right here I was contemplating on reading the Willie Lynch letter on my page. I was going to do a live read, and I am going to do a live read. That just confirms it, that it has to be done. So that people, not to spew a lot of hate, but so people can start the healing process. And when I say healing, I don't mean just uh, the people that slavery happened to. I'm talking to the people that, the oppressors, um, the oppressors and the, and the, um, the offspring of the oppressors of why we treat each other the way we do. It's a big deal knowing that this country not only messed up one half of it, um, people that live here, but they messed up the whole organism, and this mutation of hatred that we have here is the result of it, and I say that because she was typical Louis Lynch product, and it's pretty sad. So I just wanted to share that she followed me home. There were, it was a lot of traffic and she did this from the middle of the street. There was a bus behind her and cars. And she said everything that she needed to say and she tied everyone up for about two minutes. And I was like, I still kept trying to walk away. But every once in a while, she was screaming so loud that I just, and I maybe shouldn't have done it, but I just said, you're confused. I said, just look at your appearance. You're, you're confused. I said, I don't even blame you. 
that it's your responsibility to get yourself together because you are very confused. So, that's what happened. And I just wanted to share that. So, I would like to know that I'm going to be posting a live video of myself reading the Willie Lynch letter. I know it's going to offend a lot of people. It might offend everyone. But I feel like it has to be done so this country can start healing from the inside and out. James W. Moody, Shalom. Have a great day.